Ding. One, two, three. One, two, three. And hello, fellows. Hero gone here. I know, I know. It's been a long time. But I'm finally getting all of that catch up stuff with the fighting game fun log done. Today's Thursday, December 15th of 2022. Sonic Prime has just released on Netflix and. I'm excited to see where Sonic the Hedgehog goes with this new cartoon that he's got. Credit again goes to Sean Lebro for all of his Unreal Engine programming tutorials. It's definitely been a nice, fun ride around with it. That being said, last time we left off was with Advanced Move List Part 2. And right now, parts 147 through 150 will be covered. Unfortunately, I can't exactly say too much with Advanced Move List Part 3, which unfortunately is still riddled with a few things on my end. Eventually, I intend to fix things around with it, but that might take a while, so... I hope you guys uh, can deal with a bit more patience on my end. Now, moving from that, we have multi-button inputs. Now, multi-button inputs were working good, but there's definitely lots of improvements we could do. In this case, Sean the Bro covers a uh, better handling the multi-input commands like throws, a reliability of command usage, and fixing bugs with spamming inputs, as he says in his description. Now, going into where exactly the changes come in, we have ourselves this F command around here. Now, let's see. Here is F command input and our boolean is currently held. Now, in the character.cpp, we go to check for command input. Or rather, check input buffer for command using type. In our case, the is currently held is in an if statement right around this point. Lots and lots of jargon around. It's grown quite complicated for me to even summarize. I'd hate to say this to you guys. Now the other area where we have the is currently held boolean is the is input and multi input command with a lot of for loops and if statements again. Man, I'm not exactly the best at explaining the very complex systems, which means I'm probably just following Sean's tutorials rather than truly understanding the context and lots of other stuff behind it. If Sean's watching this, I'm sorry, Sean. Hopefully, it's a little hard for an autistic like me to comprehend, and it's definitely hard for any average person to handle. I'd say that you, Sean, are definitely one of those guys out there that can do it, a lot of it with ease, even if... Some of that eases more so a small facade, as things can be hard in the industry itself behind our own windows, I guess. Now, going from that, we have upgrade wall and ground bounce. In my case, most of the uh, wall bounce stuff is... Uh, Mostly okay. Our newest stuff comes in the form of new things all around landed. 
a new event called a is check is stuck in N. Or wait, that's not the right name. Ah, check stuck in other character. We have this stuff, new stuff right here that helps us out. Then we go right into that particular event itself. And around here is a bit of a in more jargon involving overlapping actors if auto overlapping character is casted to a, a character and then we set is if that cast is succeed, successful then no, is stuck in enemy is true and the overlapping character also has that to be true there are two players in this case for all of this. Now going into the blueprint details of that, we have the gold event move character smoothly and we just add check stuck another character in the, to the finished. And of course a branch logic if is stuck in enemy is false then we ignore the player or player collection. And finally, something of a smaller note, but definitely an important one, displaying frame data. If anyone knows about frame data in fighting games, then you've probably seen it in a practice mode, because most people definitely do. I've actually played a few games myself in particular, Moral Combat 11, Tekken 7, I even gave Fantasy Strike a small try and I was able to easily find frame data info for a few games like that. Now going in, it's pretty easy enough to set up a widget for it, just your usual text and bindings, but then you get into the other stuff. Last stun frames received. And do note that if you happen to hear any other sounds around, that's either my computer, which is trying its hardest and to process a lot of stuff, as well as living with siblings. It's definitely tough trying to do a fun log when they're around upstairs in the loft talking. So hopefully that can be ignored. Now, get stun frames text, then we have last stun frames received. These little, this new variable as well as get damage text last damage received are both in the code itself. It's pretty easy to implement in this case. Now going down to receive damage is where you will find these two variables used. In our case, the last damage, once received damage is done, then we track the damage dealt for frame data. In this case, last damage received equals underscore damage amount times 100. This way we can have 0 0.05 damage be 5 damage, which is probably what you prefer anyways. And then, of course, last stun frames received equals num stun frames. This is easy enough to implement, but the next part is visibility. If anyone knows, you probably only see the frame data in a practice mode, or in particular if you turn on the settings for that part to show. Going in, we have a, a new part to the event construct, which sets the visibility for the frame data panels based on the game mode type. If it's versus, story, arcade, or online, you won't see, have to see them, but in practice, you do get to see them because that's the whole point of a practice mode, isn't it? 
you're supposed to see the frame data, you're supposed to get lots of info, bits and pieces, the usuals. And it's easy enough to drag and drop a frame data panel in too, just like this. There's no need to worry about changing the size much because the one way to do that would be to do in the frame data panel itself right around here. And of course, I do have it sized to the content, so we can change the size of our damaged text, then compile, and in our base game HUD, the uh, frame data panel has exactly that change. We, of course, aren't going to implement that. No need to do that sort of crazy thing. Unless, of course, you want to go a little crazy with things and fool around with people. I honestly sometimes like doing that. That being said, let's get into the gameplay part itself. Oh, wait, I almost forgot a small something. Even though the command list part couldn't be given enough in full detail, there was a one small little part that we could, that I was able to do that helped quite a lot. In this case, the update character commands part. This is a pretty much used to help out with the command list part, and ironically, it's also helpful for the parts of the the command data tables. Instead of putting the data into the character commands itself, we can use a data table to process all that. Instead of pressing plus on character command and adding in all that stuff, we can easily go to here, update character commands, put that in the event begin play, parent begin play, because Adam Warm BP is, uh, as usual, a class that is a child class of the base character BP. And with that, we have ourselves a data table containing a lot of the info. In particular, your usual stuff you would use. Including, of course, the description and video path as well as character class for the command list part of that. And now, a little preview of the improvements. We, go in, we should be going into learn, so you can see the, da the frame data part of the widget for yourself. I always choose Adam Mortem as usual. And then, here we go into here. Now, we go up to our character, then punch them. Our damage and stun frames are 5 and 8 for the light punch. Light kick is uh, 5 and 5 for damage and stun frames. Heavy punch is 7.5 damage and stun frames being 8. It, of course, I did say that it you didn't need to show decimals, so you may want to change that 7.5 to an even value like 8 rather than, you know. And with that being said, that kind of wraps a, a few things up about the little catch-ups and updates I've been trying to do. Again, credit goes to Sean the Bro for all of this. He's, his uh, channel is now ten has now been ten years old for quite a while. He started around July twentieth of twenty twelve, and ever since uh, twenty nineteen, he's been doing the programming tutorials. And he is now sitting at six point forty five k subscribers. So yeah, I'd say that even if he does have a small base of fans around, at least he's got people like me that enjoy 
doing something like this. And with that being said, I've been Hero Gone, you've been you, and have a happy holidays, everyone. Goodbye.